Okay, so welcome back to my channel. So we've made it to episode four of Netflix series, The Haunting of Blind Manor, The Way It Came. But before I get into my recap of episode four, I'm going to do a brief recap of episode three, Two Faces Part One. And so I did misspeak when I referred to the guy as an entity because I found out that at this point, we don't know if this individual is dead or alive. But the person that both Danny and Miles um, have seen is actually Peter Quinn. And we find out that Peter Quinn is actually an associate of Henry Wingraves. He's actually his assistant to a certain degree. You know, he runs errands for him. He, you know, keeps him on track and, and his business dealings and things of that nature. And so he actually met Rebecca Jessel when she came in to interview for the nanny position. And as a matter of fact, he actually conducted most of the interview. But during the interview, you could see that there was some chemistry between her and Peter. And so this episode kind of jumped back and forth um, between 19. So I was saying it went back a year ago, which would be like 1985, 86. And of course, present day for the story would be 1987. And so we've um, jumped forward and it's the same night of the hide and seek game. Uh, the police are there. Uh, Danny is describing the guy, he, uh, the guy that she saw. She hands the photo to the officer. And of course the officers are familiar with uh, Peter Quint. And this is when Hannah tells her that about Peter Quint and how he stole 200 that 200,000 pounds from uh, Mr. Wingrave and no one has seen or heard from him since. And so uh, we jump back and uh, uh, Rebecca and Peter, Peter is at the house. Um, he's there taking care of some business for Wingrave, but of course, like I said, there was a lot of chemistry between him and uh, Rebecca. So now they're sitting now talking. It's raining. He's actually supposed to go back to London. But, you know, while they're waiting for the storm to die down a little bit, uh, they sit and talk and they reveal some truths to each other. Um, Rebecca reveals that her goal, because he was asking her, even when he saw her resume, he was like, well, wait a minute, you have, you have all of these accomplishments. You've uh, gone to law school. You know, you work for these prestigious firms. Why would you want to be a nanny? And so she's he's now getting the real story. And it's basically because she, you know, she talked a lot about racism and sexism. And while other, you know, women in her graduating class have been able to move on, it seemed like she's, you know, she is getting stuck in this cycle of uh, dealing with these older men and you know they're more interested in sliding their hand up your up your, uh, your skirt than actually um, teaching you because I believe you have to be a pupil or something I, I think that was a term to use for a certain number of years and you know she was just tired of she just didn't want to play that game or she didn't want to go that route to move ahead and so her attaching herself to Wingrave, who we're assuming at this point is at the top of his game, is going to give her somewhat of a leg up. And that's if she's able to get his ear and he decides to become her mentor or whatever, you know, that whole situation is. And so, um, uh, Peter, you know, also has his mo ulterior motives. You know, it seems like he came from a small town. He mentioned that he's not like other people from his town and, you know, he's ambitious. And so him attaching himself to one grave is also advantageous for him as well. And I think that that is something that they, him and Rebecca was able to connect over, you know, them both being ambitious and driven and, you know, they, you know, see, both see Wingrave as an opportunity to get ahead. And so, of course, the relationship progressed to a sexual relationship. And, you know, it was, you know, something, it was, it happened pretty fast, but obviously you, you saw that coming. And so what you find out is that the house staff didn't really care for um, Peter. And they didn't care for him before he stole the money and skipped town. And, you know, it seems like Peter takes a lot of liberties. You know, he's, you know, raided the uh, Wingrave wine cellar and he gave Rebecca uh, one of Charlotte's uh, fur coats. Charlotte, I believe, is the mother of Miles and Flora. Uh, and, and you also see that photo 
um, uh, that that Polaroid of them together. Uh, you actually see the the night that it was taken, and she was wearing wearing that fur coat in the actual uh, photo. So you know there was a whole situ situation that happened that night, and they end up getting into a big fight because of him. And he basically he felt like she was too comfortable with the family. And I don't, it just, it, he just flashed on her. They got into an argument and he left. I'm not about to go into all the whole details about that, but you can watch my previous recap or just watch the episode. But, and she's kind of left confused, like, where's all this coming from? And so he left that night. So at this point, we don't know if they, you know, saw each other again. Uh, Hannah, sh this crack has appeared once again. You know, she's in the chapel saying her prayers and she looks up and she sees this crack on the wall. You know, she's distracted for a minute and she turns around and looks back and the crack is actually, it's no longer there. So it's something significant about this crack. There's obviously some reason why uh, Hannah keeps seeing it, but of course that has yet to be um, revealed. Uh, Flora is, she has some type of connection with uh, whatever the spirits in that house or whatever the case may be. Uh, she left uh she got up early that morning and went to the lake when danny went to go and find her you can clearly see that she's staring at something and so when danny tried to pull her away she was telling her no 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 so she ends up having to pick her up to take her away and then we see what she was actually staring at and it appeared to be rebecca jessel standing on the other side of the lake and so of course we know for a fact that she died because it's been you know it's come up a couple of times and flora was actually the person that found her in the lake um we you know we find that uh something you know i'm i'm hope you want something to happen between owen and hannah owen just seems like an all-around good guy and you know he's you know there in town taking care of his mom and you know hannah just they just seem like they would just be a, cute, a really uh nice couple so you know it seems like something may happen between them i hope it does but you know who knows another interesting thing is that i i was trying to figure out if there's something's going to happen between jamie and danny you know there were a couple of you know scenes where it seemed like it was moving in that direction and it wasn't really so much what was said it was just basically the body language and how they would just you know gaze into each other's eyes for long you know unnecessarily long periods of time it was just so i'm like okay is something going to happen between jamie and danny Yes, we'll have to wait and see. And one big thing that happened for Danny is this entity that's been following her around that we, you know, we've only seen in reflections in mirrors and glass and things of that nature. Well, you know, we now see this entity standing right in front of her in front of the house. Why it's appearing to her in this way now, we don't know. It's... That's, you know, interesting. I mean, this, the episodes are getting better. You know, they're still slow, but they are, you know, uh, getting more and more interesting. I'll say that. So those were some of the big things that happened in, 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 in uh, episode three. So if you are interested in hearing my recap for episode four, stay tuned. Okay, so episode four opens with two young children. They're in the bedroom and they're talking about uh, his glasses and she uh, wanted to try on his glasses and she was like, oh my God, you're blind. Can you even see me? So, you know, children are, so that was funny. And then you see them, you know, progress as uh, young adults now and you realize that it's Danny and Edmund. And if Edmund looks familiar, he should because we'll get into that. So they're talking and he's telling her that, you know, it's almost over. It's only for a few while, few, um, it's only for a little while longer and everything will be all over. And so the way they're dressed, um, you would think I was thinking that, oh, they're going to like some kind of dance or something, but then we see the engagement ring. And so they're actually going to their engagement party. And obviously it's a festive, uh, occasion for everyone everyone's excited and then you see this little board where it's saying from childhood sweethearts to happily ever after so it's like tracing their uh 
their growth and you know their relationship because you know it seemed like since you know they've been attached at the hip since they were children and so um you see the people dancing lord that scene with those people dancing i'm like what are you guys listening to not one person was on beat but we gonna go ahead and move on past that but they was all getting down with the get down right everybody's having a good time and then Edmund's mother pulled her to the side, pulled Danny to the side, and take her upstairs. And she presents her with her wedding dress. Um, she had all boys and, you know, she always wanted to have a daughter to give the dress to. But of course, she, you know, that never happened. And so she wanted Dan uh, Danny to have her wedding dress. And, you know, they talked and you can see, you know, the concern. She always has this concern, forlorn look on her face, right? And, you know, she, you know, reluctantly took the dress and, you know, she loved the dress. She think it's beautiful, but you can uh, tell that, you know, her heart is not really, and she's like really, she has a lot of anxiety. And then we flash to present day where, you know, she's kind of looking at herself. It's, uh, you know, in the previous episode, Owen's mother passed away. And so they're all getting ready to go to the funeral. And uh, Jamie came to her room, you know, to see how, you know, how things were going. And, you know, they kind of talked about the dress a little bit. It was, it was a little inappropriate. And she really wasn't, you could tell that she was distressed. And Jamie told her that Owen, you know, said that it's okay if, you know, people couldn't make it, then that was fine. And so she was, she was okay with that. And she was, you know, telling Jamie that she had just, you know, buried somebody that was very close to her. And like, she really just wasn't in the right headspace. And so she asked Jamie to help her out of her dress. But while Jamie was helping her out of her dress, she looked over to her mirror and she could see the entity staring uh, back at her. And of course it was, you know, she kind of jumped and Jamie asked her if she was okay. And basically James told her, yeah, you probably need to stay here and just get some rest. And so Jamie went on to the funeral without her. And so Danny ends up going to, she was on her way to the chapel and then she heard some noise that kind of distracted her. And she's kind of looking like, what is that? Someone singing. And then she find it was, uh, it was Flora. Flora is doing grave rubbings. And, you know, they talked a little bit and Flora asked her is, will Owen's mom be there? And she said, yes, in a manner of speaking. And so she said, because my parents aren't, you know, my parents aren't, you know, they died far away and we buried empty caskets, but we had to pretend um, like they were. And, you know, they sat and talked for a minute and you know, I think Danny said something to the fact, you know, your parents love you very much and, you know, they're always with you and, you know, they'll always be here. And, uh, Laura, and Flora was like, well, no, they're not here, but it's okay if you want to, if you, uh, want to think that if it makes you feel better, she is a hoot. I tell you, Flora. And so, uh, she said something to Flora about you got, you know, you wet your pants and so Flora just got so tickled. Right. And so she ran into the chapel where, um, Hannah was, <laughs> Hannah was in the chapel lighting candles, you know, saying her prayers, I'm assuming. And she said, uh, uh, Danny called my pants trousers and she said that I wet my pants and something was just the way that she said it. And, you know, they call, they call, you know, we call them pants, they call them trousers. And the way that she said, she said, she said, I wet my pants like I was a baby or something, it, it, but whatever it was, it tickled, uh, Flora and it actually made Hannah giggle a little bit. And so Hannah and, uh, uh, Hannah and, uh, Danny starts talking because Hannah decided she wasn't, she wasn't going to go to the funeral either. Um, and she said, you know, Owens understands that, you know, we all worship in our own way. And I believe she said that she hasn't been to a funeral since her husband died. And you know how people grieve is just how, how they grieve is a personal thing. And so she ends up handing, um, Danny a uh, match to light a candle to, you know, say a prayer or, you know, do whatever she needs to do. And so she ends up taking Flora back to the house so that they could start dinner. And, uh, Flora just left her, uh, paperwork there, right? Left her, her little drawings and stuff. And so as Danny was leaving, she picked up the drawing and for some reason, the camera zeroed in on this rubbing and it's Viola Lloyd. And when she lifted the paint, the page, you could kind of see it kind of stuck there for a while. So I'm like, Hmm, is this going to be significant? Viola, Viola Lloyd, uh, what's that? 
1645 to 1680, something like that. I don't know. They go back to, they go, they're back in the house in the kitchen and, um, Hannah wants to uh, wants to make Owen's favorite shepherd pie, and so they're talking. And eventually, Jamie comes back from the funeral, and you know she talked about you know you know how things were. Obviously, it's a funeral, so it's a somber moment, and you know how she's you know, talking about because his mom had dementia. And she was like, you know, it's, you know, it's, I can't imagine, you know, having to go through that. And, you know, you pretty much, um, you're just a shell of your former self and how sad it was and how unfair it was. And, you know, and as she was taking off her earrings, you know, she, you just, you know, they're continuing the conversation. And, uh, she noticed that Jamie was kind of staring at her and you turned that, uh, that Jamie noticed that Danny was kind of staring at her and then da and Danny you can see Danny was like like really looking at uh Jamie and then she originally came to herself and went to the kitchen to rinse off. I forget what she was cutting I, uh probably some vegetables or something she was washing off the vegetables and this is actually the scene from the trailer where she was standing at the sink and then she looked down and she saw the hands around her waist and you know, she had somewhat of a panic. She was starting to have a panic attack. So she kind of, you know, asked if she was okay. She was fine. So she power walked like she did out of the kitchen. And she kind of stopped in the foyer. And she kind of stopped. And she was looking. And you guess, obviously, she was looking at something. And so then we finally see what she was looking at. And it looks like Peter Quinn. And so she's walking. And you know, she can see, you know, as she's walking and she's looking through, you know, each, each room, she can see the windows as like he's walking towards the front door. And so eventually she runs to the front door, grabs a poker, flings the door open. And poor Owen is like, what the hell? <laughs> he's like, he just came from, you know, he just came from his mom's funeral. And he's now there at, you know, at the house. And he uh, initially... He was like, you know, I don't, you know, how I ended up here. You know, I just started driving. I ended up here. And, you know, maybe I should go. And Hannah, and Hannah told him, you know, you know, just come in. You know, we've made dinner. And, you know, we, you know, we want you to stay. And so Flora was like, how did you, she asked Hannah, how did you know, um, how did you know Owen was going to be here? She, um, because she made your favorite, right? So they ended up going into the kitchen. Danny, uh, is still standing there, like trying to catch her breath. Um, after almost bludgeoning poor Owen. <laughs> and uh, Jamie takes the poker away from her and kind of walks away. And then you see the first, uh, f the, see the next flashback where uh, Danny is getting fitted. So, you know, it looks like a really pretty dress. And they, you know, both uh, her mom and Edmund's mom is there. And the woman that's, you know, going to tailoring the dress. And it's almost like she was kind of flirting with Danny a little bit. And so Danny, you know, the moms, they have their wine. So they're a little tipsy and talking about their marriages. And her mom, Danny's mom was like, you know, I married, you know, my marriage is horrible. You know, I wish I had, I still had my dress to give to her, but I burned it. And it was whole, you're, drunk off their ass, right? And so <laughs> the woman, you know, was telling her, you know, uh, you know, this really is a pretty dress and you really have pretty shoulders. And, you know, she like has her, you know, she kind of rubbed her hand down her back. It was a whole scene, right? And so we flash back to the current day. And of course, Flora is talking to Owen and she was like, well, you know, uh, Hannah said this was your favorite and I'll, you know, help her make your favorite because you're my favorite. She adores Owen. And he, she was like, he was like, oh, thank you, darling. And so, you know, they talked a little bit and, oh, then he leans over to, uh, Flora and was like, you know, I was almost killed. Right, and so they started laughing because obviously they were talking about the incident at the door, and Danny was just so embarrassed. She was like, "I am so, I am so sorry." Right, and so they just all they are kind of tickled, right? And so, um, you know, he started talking about you know how you know why Miss Pie is his favorite, how his mother used to make that when she traveled because it, it kept for days, and um, Flora ended up asking him if he was leaving. And he was like, why are you trying to get rid of me? And she's like, no, no. And so he was like, oh, I think Hannah would like me to get out of her kitchen and out of her hair. And, and uh, you know, they had a little uh, fun back, going back and forth. And then she was like, you know, you're not going to die. This is Flora talking to Owen. 
And he was like, huh, why'd you say that? And she said, well, you know, when my parents died, I feel like she's just beyond her years, right? So she said, well, I, when my parents died, you know, I thought that I was, I thought that I had died too. And I thought that, um, even though I, you know, I thought I was dead, even though people could still see me and hear me. And then, you know, I realized that I wasn't. And she said, because I just realized that I was really, really sad. And she was like, you can only be really, really sad if you're alive. And, you know, I learned a secret that made me, um, and so while she's telling the story, you can see them, you know, feeling like, oh Lord, you know? And so she was like, I learned the secret. And he was like, well, what's, well, what's the secret? She was like, um, I've realized that people are never, um, people die, but they're never really gone. And so it was a, it was a, a an emotional, an emotional moment for, uh, for them a little bit. And so the next thing you know, they started talking about wine and, um, uh, no, of course, Miles chimed in and he's like, I would like to have a glass of wine. And of course, Danny was like, uh, well, that's enough. You know, you cannot have any wine. And then, uh. Uh, Owen started saying, you know, my mom used to give me wine, but she would dilute it. She put a lot of water in it, right? <laughs> and so Danny said the same thing. Like my mom would do the same thing. And he flashed some kind of bag. He got really angry and was like, I don't want any watered down wine. I want a real drink, a regular drink. And he went, they just flashed on these people. And they all kind of looking like, who, what? Right, so they all, they're looking, and she jumped up, and she said, oh, absolutely not. Go to, you know, leave the table now, right? And so he kind of looked that way and gave her the evil eye. He was looking at her like he really wanted to say something to her, right? So she ends up, she's still like, no, you need to leave. So you see, uh, Flora got up, and she said, get told, uh, oh, and good night. And eventually, um, uh, Miles followed, and she followed them to help them, you know, get them ready for bed. And so, uh, Hannah was like, you know what? I'm really, st I, you know, I knew I liked her for some reason. Like, cause she's not going to put up with, put up with crap from them, from the, from the kids. All right. So we're in, uh, so we're in, uh, Flora's room and you can hear somebody brushing their teeth, but then you see the house, the part of the, the door opens all by itself. And you see that it's. Um, Flora and they're brushing her teeth and Danny is standing there and she see, you know, she saw this happen, like this door, this house, this door just, just opened on its own. And so she walked over and she opened, you know, both sides so, she, so she, that she could see in to see if, you know, maybe something was in there or whatever the case may be. And she reached in and she grabbed this doll, this doll and Flora walks in and said, Miss Clayton, can you please not touch my dolls? You know, I have them set up in a specific way. And she apologized. And uh, she was like, oh, and then she looked at the doll and she was like, oh, that's Peter. And so um, Danny was like, well, have you or Miles seen Peter? Um, have you let him in the house? Um, you know, and, and you, you know, when you know that you shouldn't. And so she was like, no, we have, no, we didn't know. We've never let, we haven't seen him and we never let him in the house. That's not how it works. And of course I'm like, okay, what does she mean? But that's not how it works. And then you can see her eyes kind of go, but it's always look like she's waiting on someone or something to tell her what to say or what to do. And so her eyes kind of go, go over. And Daddy notices this, and she was like, "Well, who are you talking to?" She was like, "Why are you looking over my shoulder?" And uh, of course, um, uh, Flora was like, "I don't know what you're talking about." She's like, "No, you do that a lot." And Flora and Flora was just like, "I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't do that. That's not me. I don't know who it is, but it's not me." Mm -mm. So she ended up getting her into bed, and of course, she walks across the hall because she has to talk to Miles about his little his little incident, right? And so she was like, well, that was a show downstairs. And he was like, was it? It was almost like he didn't remember it. Or I said, I don't know. And I was thinking about the story he told in the previous episode about the puppet tier that made the 20 puppets. And each puppet had a different personality. I'm like, are we going to find out that Miles has multiple personalities or something? Because like I said in another video, he's like Jekyll and Hyde. Like he, 
his mood swings are ridiculous, right? And so she talked, you know, she talked to him and she was like, you know, we're a lot of like, um, we both, you know, I lost my parents too. She said her, her father died when he, uh, she was about Flora's age and her mom was there, but she wasn't really there. And, you know, when you grow up in a situation like that, you kind of grow, you have to grow up fast and, you know, you, I understand that you see yourself as mature and you spend a lot of time around adults and so you want to do what they do and, you know, but you have to, um, the thing about it is that you have, you know, you have a lot of people here that care greatly about you and you have to decide basically the kind of relationship that you want with them. And if you want these in people in your life, I mean, you have to do better. You have to treat people, treat them better. And they talked and you know, he was like, had a completely different mood. He was in a completely different space and he was receptive. And you know, she said her good nights and you know, that was that. And so she walked downstairs and Jamie is there holding her coat. And she's like, well, we're going, we're going to have a bonfire and you're coming with us. And so they, uh, raided the, I guess they raided the, um, <laughs> the, um, water graves, uh, uh, wine collection. And so they came out with bottles and bottles of wine and each have their own bottle. And you know, they're, you know, kind of just talking a little bit. And as you can see Danny deep in thought. And then she has another flashback and it's the, uh, they're at a restaurant and you know, the waiter just, I guess he just came and brought their drinks or something. And you can clearly see that she is nervous and he's like, well, just calm down. You know, it's everything's going to be okay. And then she starts talking about the wedding and how it's just too much. And, and he's like, well, you know, we can always scale it back and, you know, you're talking like you don't actually, you know, you're, you're acting like you don't really want to get married. And then she just made this face. She just stared at him like, you know, I, she didn't say it, but her facial expression said it all. And so he's now like, okay, of course he's devastated. You know, you've seen this growth with them from the time they were kids until now. And he's like, well, I don't understand why didn't you tell, you know, why didn't you say something sooner? And was it something that I did? And of course she's like, no, no, you know, it's not. And she's trying to console him and you know, he's hurt at this point. And so you kind of see them, you know, they're kind of sitting there. It's quiet now. And so now they're in the car and you know, she's saying how sorry she is. And you know, he's, you know, and how she still loves him. And he's like, you know what? F you, I don't even, you know, I just can't even be bothered. I can't be around you right now. And then he steps out of the car. And unfortunately that is why when we, he's presented to us, it looks like his eyes are glowing. It's because those are the, the, uh, the headlights of a truck that basically plowed into him as soon as he stepped out of the car. And of course, Danny is there. She is devastated like she's in shock you see him he's like barely clinging on to life and they made it a point to focus on his hand now, if you remember in the previous episode when she was in the bed and she turned over and she saw like this hand reaching out to her that is we could see that where that you know that came from and so we flash back to the bonfire and Jamie is, you know, going into, you know, the history of why people do bonfires and the bonfire was um so that they can, uh, you know, talk about the people that meant something to them. It's like an offering to keep away the evil spirits. And it was initially called the bone fire and the whole background of that. And, you know, they basically went around and talked about, you know, the people that they, you know, that they, you know, think of a lot or think fondly of. And so the first person that stood up was Hannah and she talked about Rebecca and how beautiful and intelligent Rebecca was and how she was worth 10 of he who shall not be named. And, you know, it was just sad that things happened the way that they did. Cause she had, you know, she had all this potential and, you know, she felt like, you know, she was punished in some, in, in a way for it. And then, Jamie stood up and she talked about Laid and Lordy Wingrave, which would be Flora and Mal's parents, how they were kind, how they were good people. 
and she talked about how grateful that you know they would be that Danny was there, you know, having somebody that care about their children, that that really care about their kids, and how you know it's been a joy having Danny there, and the you know the whole thing. And then she, you know, turned to Danny, and Danny was just wasn't ready. She was like, you know, I'll pass. And they was, they was like, that's fine, you know, that's okay. And then Owen, he starts talking about his mom and how much she meant to him and how much she loved him and, you know, how she was long gone before she died, you know, because she had uh, dementia and, you know, they, um, how, you know, you people, you never talked about, talked about, knew, you know, knew that she had, she, how funny she was and how she had a sweet tooth and, you know, he talked about all the things that, you know, he loved about um, his mom. And then we have another flashback of, ja of Jamie, Jamie, of Danny and Edmund's parents and his brother at the hospital. The doctor walks in and he tells, you know, gives them, unfortunately, the, the bad news. Danny has to step out. She goes into the bathroom. And this is the first time she sees this entity um, in the reflection. So I, you know, initially I didn't know where it started. And then I think when I first saw the glasses, I thought, well, maybe it's because she's holding on to these glasses. There's something attached to these glasses. But then seeing this episode that, you know, she started seeing him long before we even saw anything about the glasses. And so... Now they're at the funeral, of course, and of course she's standing with the family and people are, you know, giving their condolences and you can see that she could snap any minute. And then for whatever reason, she's positioned right in front of a mirror. She looks up and then she sees this entity and she as she held it together for as long as she could. And then she kind of just, she couldn't do it anymore. And she basically apologized to everybody and she walked out. And uh, so they're back at the bonfire and Hannah and Owen, they sat, they're still sitting at the bonfire and they're talking. Jamie and Danny kind of walked off and they, you know, started talking. Jamie was like, you know, I, what, I can see that you're not okay, but I fear asking the question because I don't really like being lied to. And so she, you know, ends up telling her about, you know, her, you know, I told you about my fiance and, you know, how, uh, he died and, you know, you know, we broke up just before, like right before she was like, Oh my God, like what? Yeah. So they had the whole conversation and then, you know, it did the inevitable happened. They, you know, started getting into it, getting into it. And then she sees, uh, Edmund and she jumps back. And that's misinterpreted as, and so for some reason that was misinterpreted by, um, by, uh, Jamie as she wasn't interested, but you know, that wasn't the case. She was taken, she was scared. She was taken aback. And so, um, we go back to the, but she never really gave her a chance to explain. She was like, well, you know, I get it. You know, you just told me that you just weren't, you weren't ready. And you know, she, and you know, she really, she really didn't give her an opportunity to explain. She, I guess she just didn't want to be, she felt like she was going to be rejected and didn't want to hear it at that point. But anywho, so they go, end up going back to the bonfire and you kind of come in when, uh, Owen is saying that, you know, talking to Hannah about going to Paris and they walk up and, uh, Jamie was like, uh, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm tired, you know, I'm ready to go. And she was like, you know, come on, Owen, cause he's drunk off his ass. So she's, she's, he can't, he's not in any position to drive. So she's going to drive him home. And you can see Danny standing there, you know, concerned cause you know, she wants to, she feel like she may have messed something up between her and Jamie, but Jamie is trying to turn around and she ends up telling her, you know, it's all good. We all, it's all good. We it's, we're fine. And the next thing that we see is Danny's in bed. Okay. So Danny's in bed and she's staring at these glasses on the nightstand. And eventually she jumps up and she grabs the glasses off the nightstand and she walks out of the room. And then they flash to Flora. Flora, uh, something wakes her up. She looks at her, uh, looks into her dollhouse and she noticed that the, um, 
Danny doll is missing. And then she looks over and then she sees the creepy doll. I'm assuming that that's the that's uh Rebecca. It looks like the doll she made for Rebecca. And so she saw that doll called for Miles. And so Danny ends up going to the kitchen to get her some uh get the bottle of wine. She got the glasses in her hand. And then as she's about to walk out, the kids run up behind her and she's like, what they and she's like, what are you guys doing down here? What are you guys doing up? So now they're trying to think on their feet. You know, Flora had this nightmare and you know, I, she uh, she's terrified and she's scared and she doesn't she doesn't want to go back to bed. And of course, Danny stopped to talk to her. And then you realize what they're trying to do is distract her. Because I don't know if you can see in this photo, I tried to insert another photo where it's where I kind of circled it. As they were talking to her, this whatever this thing is is walking out of the house, and they didn't want her to see it or possibly run into it. So they're stalling for time, right? And she's like, you know, I was, you know, I'm so uh, terrified. And she's asking uh, 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 Flora about, you know, so tell me about your dream. And she was saying, I was this monster in the closet under the bed. She's, you know, she's basically just spinning this thing to keep the, so that things can uh, move, progress. And so um, you can see that while she's talking, Miles is kind of, she's kind of keeping an eye out to make sure that whatever, you know, the coast is clear. And then, uh, Flora asked to buy some more time. She was like, can I have a glass of milk? And so Danny goes to get the glass of milk. Miles kind of trades, you can see the muddy footprints. He kind of follows the muddy footprints to the front door. He looks out. He doesn't see anything. He closes the door. Uh, Danny gets Flora back in bed. He comes downstairs and you can see that she sees the uh, the muddy footprints. And I'm thinking she's going to say, okay, well, wait a minute. Where did these footprints come from? Because the kids came from behind her. And certainly when she put Florida to bed, there were no, she was, there wasn't any mud mud tracks in her room or on her sheets or anything. So I'm thinking she's going to, you know, put to, like, try to, something's going to jog her. I'm going to be like, okay, what is actually going on here? But she, her whole thing was, you know what? I'll talk to them about this later. So she still takes the kids going out in the wee hours of the night and tracking mud in the house. Even though there's only one set of footprints. So, <laughs> it was like, okay. Um, so, she makes her way to the bonfire and she throws the glasses into the bonfire. And when she looks, she, you know, looks up and you can clearly see that she's look, looking at something or someone and she see Edmund standing across from her. And he stood there for a good half second. And she said, okay, I guess it's just you and me. And she sat down and there, I guess they having to stare her off or something. I don't know. And that's basically how this episode, <laughs> um, episode ends. It's good to see that, um, at first I thought she had done something heinous. Like she had actually murdered somebody, um, which of course is not the case. You know, yes, she lied and she's, had plenty of opportunities to tell them the truth even before they got to the point of where they were engaged but you know that's neither here nor there she wasn't responsible for his um his death but i can understand why she has so much guilt um guilt about it so i'm gonna end this here and i will talk to you guys later